Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Monday, June 2nd, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Take a look at the Aurora all the way down to Salida, Colorado last night. Holy macaroni. We also have a huge eruption and pyroclastic flow at Etna with video, so buckle up, Buttercup, and the Atlantic hurricane season may rocket off here in the second week of June as that system continues to show up in the models. Keep calm. It is indeed boom time. We've got a colossal cloud of Sahara dust smothering the Caribbean en route to the U.S., a massive cloud of dust from the Sahara Desert blanketed most of the Caribbean on Monday in the biggest event of its kind this year as it heads towards the United States. The cloud extends some 2,000 miles, 3,200 kilometers from Jamaica to well past Barbados in the eastern Caribbean and some 750 miles from the Turks and Caicos Islands in the northern Caribbean down to Trinidad and Tobago. Here's the map, and you can see the dust in question. We're over at windy.com, and we will run the models through. So a lot of the sunsets people are posting uh, from Florida are looking through this dust. And as we move the model through here, it's really not going to affect much of the U.S. at all. So here we are uh, into Tuesday. We'll move it into Wednesday. So by Tuesday, it hits the southern tip of Florida. By Wednesday, it could be moving up into central Florida. Here's Thursday. It's pushing all the way up near Georgia. But it's mostly hovering over the Gulf, Gulf Coast and the Atlantic. So... Florida in this model is really the only state that is affected in any big way. But take a look at, at the effects. Yeah, I'm losing some. And you can see there the smoke. That Sahara smoke will be covering the entire peninsula by Friday the 6th. We've got severe thunderstorms threatening the central U.S. with flooding, hail, and tornadoes through midweek. A series of severe thunderstorms will stretch from southwestern Wisconsin and western Illinois to northern Texas through midweek, bringing risks of damaging winds, large hail, and isolated tornadoes. Here is the severe thunderstorm Risk late Monday afternoon into Monday night. We're talking Aberdeen and South Dakota, Sioux Falls, North Platte, all the way down to Garden City in moderate risk. Tuesday through Tuesday night, the storms move slightly east. Green Bay through Davenport, Iowa will be in the crosshairs, but a threat will exist all the way down through Dallas and Austin. Severe thunderstorm threat exists Wednesday afternoon through the evening from Detroit down through Dallas in a straight line. Indy, St. Louis, Springfield, Little Rock, Dallas, heads up. As National Hurricane Center is tracking a new tropical wave next week ahead for Florida. Holy mackerel, what does that mean? Well, we've been tracking this system for days. Still just a 40% chance of cyclone formation but look at what has just showed up here over in the Atlantic Basin. The first uh, warning of the season, disturbance number one, with a 10% chance of cyclone formation in the next seven days. The hail map for yesterday, Sunday, June 1st, is epic. 123,372 households impacted by hail one inch or larger. 3,569 homes impacted by gorilla hail. That's 10 square miles. And the big culprit was Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. Take a look at the air quality here over at the fire and smoke map version 4.1. We can see that those Canadian wildfires are still plunging down into the eastern U.S. And really 
while affecting air quality in a big way for over half of the United States. Now pushing west through the Pacific Northwest and a lobe now pushing into the Pacific. Take a look at that. Good news. We're in the clear here in the Four Corners. Four Corners is the only area with clear air except for a few corridors here up in the Northeast. And here is the full forecast. Severe thunderstorms in the central and southern plains. Heavy rainfall in southern Florida. We've also got bad air warnings up here in the Great Lakes region, especially Minnesota and Wisconsin. Flooding warnings through the central U.S. And holy macaroni, severe thunderstorms watch through the central U.S. Scattered severe thunderstorms may produce damaging winds large hail, and a couple of tornadoes across parts of the Great Plains into the Midwest through tonight and again Tuesday. Could be another lose day there. Heavy to excessive rainfall and urban flooding will continue over South Florida and the Florida Keys through Tuesday. Good news there. Southern Florida needs their precipitation now. And the GFS model is has been lining up day after day on a major tropical storm or hurricane hitting the Gulf Coast in the second week of June. Now we have on this model landfall of a Cat 3 storm June 14th in Louisiana. Well, that, that model is far out, but it keeps agreeing that that is the situation here. Now this is that tropical wave that they're claiming may have development in the next seven days. Uh, I doubt it but we'll keep a close eye on it. My worries are on this baby coming up here, well, in just 12 days from now. And a quick look at the full GFS model. We'll walk it through. In just a few hours, we're going to have severe weather exploding over Nebraska, as well as the northern tier. By tomorrow, a huge front will move through the center of the U.S. Take a look at that. And more severe, severe weather in the center of the U.S., Day after day, as uh, by the end of the week here, most of the severe weather moves to the south. That's good news there. And let's take a look at the total accumulated precipitation uh, to see if there's any major flooding threats. They're all going to be in the center of the U.S. before that potential tropical storm moves up there through the Yucatan and Cuba and strikes Louisiana second week of June. Prior to that, here is the flooding potential in purple and those yellow bullseyes. Seismic update. Look at this rocker. We just had another 3.6 in Stanley, Idaho. This has been happening for several days, activity up in this region. Most activity worldwide has cooled off. We've got a 5.8 in Turkey. Other than that, very low level activity worldwide. Good news for those that live on fault lines. Now, what we know about the Mount Etna eruption as tourists have been seen fleeing from the region, hundreds of people were far too close to this mountain when it erupted earlier today. Volcano activity measured in Sicily last night picked up momentum, sending holidaymakers literally running for their lives. Here is some footage of Etna erupting daytime earlier today. Hey, hey. And you can find this footage over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave on X. We implore you all watching to go follow us there. Now, here is the video in question we published 10 hours ago, just two hours after it occurred. On X, people running for their lives at Etna as this event occurred, this is insane. Take a look. Absolutely insane. Follow us over on X at Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave. And here is the full video of the entire event. Uh, and before we play it, after seven hours of erupting on Mount Etna last night, during the day, Mount Etna busted a big one. This clip is courtesy of Weather Sicily, and it is 
spectacular. Take a look. There's no audio, but it is real time. It's not speed. It's not speeded up, and it is absolutely insane. Take a look at that pyroclastic flow moving down the flanks. Anyone in the reaches of that smoke would literally be liquefied. This is one of the most spectacular Etna eruptions I've ever seen in the last decade. So things are afoot and things are heating up worldwide. Worldwide Volcano News. First on the list today, Sangay to 20,000 feet. Liwotolo, 6,000 foot blast there. We've got Etna. We obviously showed that strong Strombolian activity, and there will be more updates as we get along. Take a look at here. This is how the volcanic eruption began seven hours before that pyroclastic flow. Etna volcano, Strombolian volcanic activity began last night. And then shortly after, in the morning in Japan, holy macaroni, powerful volcanian eruptions at, well, you guessed it, Sukunajima! Con Leon also on the list, an 11,000 foot blast today. Roventador to 14,000 foot. Poas to 11,000. Popo, volcanic ash observed. Etna puffing and that major blast to 21,000 feet. That is quite significant. We've seen it go as high as 23,000 feet in the last several years. Ibu to 8,000 feet. Dukono to 8,000. And there is the shot of the beginning of the spectacular paroxysm at Etna. Massive pyroclastic flow from the southeast crater created billowing ash plumes today. Sangay to 21,000 feet. Sukunajima! Yeah, puffing in passing. Reventador, possible volcanic ash. Popo to 19,000 feet. And we're about to wrap up the list here. We've got Semadu, who knew? Now you do. 15,000 foot puff there. 8,000 foot at Ibu. And Sangay to 20,000 feet. And a lot of people, oh my God, what happened here? Let's, we're going to have to readjust things. A lot of people have been a asking on X, do geomagnetic storms cause human health effects? And we've been talking about this for a decade, but many people who have just been watching us in the last few years are unaware of graphs or pictures or diagrams like this. There is a geomagnetic storm KP index that goes from zero to nine. Nine is extreme, and zero is extreme cosmic ray alert. And there are different health risks associated with each of these regions. You could be down here in the cosmic ray alert. You can be up here in the geomagnetic storm alert. And the safe zone is KP1 to 5. KP6 to 9 is geomagnetic storm alert zone, and KP0 is cosmic ray risks. Now, what we're experiencing recently is geomagnetic storms. So that's geomagnetic storm risks, including heart rate fluctuations, heart attacks, strokes of all kinds, acute coronary syndrome, blood pressure increase, seizures, migraine risk, anxiety, stress, emotional instability, cognitive diminution, Suicide risk, mental disorder flare-up, radiation risk, alert for diabetic patients and those with metabolic disorders. So heed the warnings, and this chart will be linked below. And take a look at the spectacular aurora. This picture coming from Salida, Colorado at 1.04 a.m. last night. Absolutely spectacular. And that brings us to the space weather update. A moderate G2 geomagnetic storm is in effect currently, according to Solar Ham. Here we are, K5+. plus. You can see the aurora is lighting up through the northern hemisphere, especially Canada. So if you have the opportunity, get out and look up. This is the end of the geomagnetic storming for now. And it is, well, let's take a look at telemetry. We did... It, it seemed there was a small CME that passed just about six or 12, about 10 hours ago, kicking things up a little bit. 
The BZ is still south of center, so geomagnetic storming is king, and it's really lighting up in the southern hemisphere. So those people down there in Kiwi and New Zealand are probably getting quite the light show, in my opinion. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please hit the thumbs up. Share this video with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We would appreciate it. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Mm.